Hello guys, today I want to talk about one element of Laravel security in Laravel projects, which is accessing other users' data, which is often referred as multi-tenancy. And I will show you three different ways how to protect from that. And this comes from the idea, so I've published a video recently, top seven mistakes developers make about security, and I didn't mention one of them, and two comments were about that. So Wildfire GTR pointed that protecting the ID in the route is important, and also David suggested to expand that with video on Laravel policy, so I thought from two comments I will discuss the situation, which is as follows. So for example, you have a list of records and each record may belong to a user, which is yourself or not, or another user. In the database, you have something like this. So list of tasks and then created by ID, or it could be user ID field, which is ID. And in my case, I'm logged in as user ID two, and I have my own list. And in the controller, you have something like that task where created by ID, get. And by the way, this admin panel was generated by our quickadminpanel.com. So if you want to check that out to generate your admin panels, I've modified that code for demo purposes, but still as admin panel generator, you could try out our quick admin panel. Now, the problem is if I click edit, I get into the record of task slash ID slash edit. And if the developer doesn't check the permission of the record, who that record belongs to, then I may guess the ID of the record of someone else. So for example, again, in the database, there's a record with ID two created by ID user three. But if I change that one to two in the URL, I still get the access to another user's record. I can edit that, modify that and stuff like that. So that's a security issue. If you don't check, if you just in the edit method, just show the edit form with task as passed by route model binding. And as I said, I will show you three ways to protect from that. The first way is probably the most straightforward is to get into controller and just put if statement here. So if task created by ID doesn't equal to auth ID current user, then you do something like abort 403, for example, which is forbidden code. So if I refresh the page now, I will get 403 forbidden page. So that would be one way to check that. Another way, a more popular way is to form the permissions around Laravel models into policies. So I can run PHP artisan make policy task policy, for example, and with another parameter dash dash model task, it would generate this class of task policy with the default methods of view any view create update and delete and restore and force delete and task would be auto generated as a parameter. And in this case, what we're interested in is the method view. So can I view the record or not? Or actually you can utilize another method of update. So in this example, it's a debatable thing. So edit is view or update. So edit form is probably view, but update method is probably the permission for update. I know it sounds confusing, but there's no rule here. So policies are generated with different methods and you can assign those methods to the actual controller by using this authorize. So instead of doing these three lines, you just do this authorize method of the policy, which is view in our case, and then the model record, which is task like this. Then Laravel gets into that policy method in the view and then returns true or false task created by ID equals user ID or not. And that user is automatically the logged in user. So you may delete this one, have this authorize. And then if we refresh the page, we have a bit different error message. This action is unauthorized, probably more clear for the end user. But now you separated the check of permissions into policy class, which is more Laravel ish way to do that. And then your controller becomes shorter because in your controller methods, all you will have is this authorized. And another way to protect from that is not use policy or permissions or gates, but actually on the query level of the records to filter out only the logged in user. And this is how we implemented the multi-tenancy inside of our quick admin panel. So in the controller, we don't filter or don't check anything. Instead, on the model level in eloquent model, we have a trait which could be reused in other models as well. And that trait, multi-tenant model trait, 
checks automatically. This is the main part. Add global scope, so eloquent global scope. And this looks quite fancy and flexible because we want that trait to be reused in various models. But basically, this is what is happening here. So create it by ID like this. And then where null is for admins. So I will shorten it for you to be more clear and less flexible. So this is what is happening. We're adding global scope. If it's not an admin user, all the eloquent queries around that model, around the task model would add this condition. So now if we refresh the page, we get 404 not found. It's not a security message. And that's a personal preference and debatable question. In this case, what error should you show? Should you show not found and wouldn't even tell the user whether that record exists or not, kind of hide it from them? Or 403 forbidden, which actually tells them that the record exists, but they don't have access to that. It's probably a personal preference. But the general point that I wanted to make, you can add a global scope. This is kind of overcomplicating thing from our quick admin panel again to be flexible, to add it for multiple models. And this is how the created by ID is actually created. So in your case, it may be much more simple, just these three lines and that's it. And you can add them not in a trade, but in the model directly in the boot method of the model. What do you think? Which way would you use? Would you prefer? Or maybe if you have any more questions around that, shoot in the comments below. I will explain some more. Also, I will link another video from my YouTube channel about roles and permissions in general. It's quite a popular video where I explain it step by step in like 15 minutes or so. So you can check that out if you haven't seen that. And also, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, you can check out the generator of those admin panels at quickadminpanel.com by purchasing that. You get actually 50% discount for all of my courses. So you will get the discount code for that. And also you're supporting this YouTube channel so I can keep shooting daily videos instead of spending time marketing quick admin panel. And see you guys in other videos.